In this video I'm going to look at acid base titrations. So I'll start off the video by pointing out all the various essential pieces of apparatus um, and then I'll go into actually doing a titration and showing you um, all the sort of little tips to make sure that you get as accurate an answer as possible and then the last thing I'll do is I will look at the a typical calculation and show you how to perform one of those. So we'll start off with the purpose of the titration. So this is an acid base titration that I'm going to do. Um, so we've got some hydrochloric acid and this is a known concentration. Sometimes you would refer to that as a standard solution, but we know the concentration of the acid and you can see there it's written up as 1.00 moles per decimeter cubed. So we've brought this in, it's, we know that that's the concentration of the acid. The base that I'm going to use is sodium hydroxide solution. Now we think the concentration of this is about one mole per decimeter cube. We're not quite sure. So the purpose of the titration for the video is to work out the concentration of this solution of sodium hydroxide. So that's what titrations are used for, to work out the concentrations of um, solutions using a, sol a solution of known concentration. So the essential pieces of apparatus, so we've got this very, very long um, measuring cylinder essentially with a tap at the bottom. This is called a burette and one of our solutions will go into there. This piece of apparatus here is called a pipette and the one I'm going to use in the titration is 25 centimetres cube capacity. The titration will be carried out in a conical flask. So this is specially designed, as you'll see later on, that you can swirl it and you don't lose any of your, um, your mixture. And obviously, so that we know when the titration is complete, um, because both of the solutions that we are using are colourless and there is no colour change in, if these two solutions are just mixed, they, they form another colourless solution, so you can't tell when the reaction's finished. We're going to use an indicator, and this one is called phenol phthalene. You can use other indicators for this titration, but this is the one we're going to use for this one. What else have we got? We've got a pipette filler, so you'll see me using that to fill up the pipette. I've got a waste beaker a funnel. Um, we don't use tap water for things like this, we use distilled water or deionized water. It's basically water that's had all of the ions present taken out, so this is pure H2O, so there's nothing in here that will contaminate or affect the results. And the only other thing is we've got um, a white tile and that will help us see the end point, so that's when the, um, the acid and the alkali or the base have completely reacted with each, with each other and you'll see the end point much more clearly um, when you stand your flask on a white tile. So I think that's everything so we'll get on and do the titration. So obviously the first thing we need to do is put our safety equipment on so we've got our lab coat on buttoned up and safety glasses on and they now need to stay on for the duration of the experiment. So the, we're going to fill the burette up now. A um, couple of things to know about the burette before we start. Obviously the taps at the bottom here. It's currently in the vertical position, which means it's open. So obviously we don't want to have acid all over our feet. So close the tap, horizontal position is closed. Get the burette to a comfortable level. You can just squeeze this, so you can, it doesn't matter how tall you are, you can get this to a comfortable level and you can, like I've done here, you can hang this over the edge of the bench and you can go right down there if you need to. I'm going to have it about here. So the zero is at eye level, taps closed. I'm going to pop the funnel in and I'm going to put some acid in. And the first thing we need to do is we need to put a, put a little bit of acid in 
and we're going to rinse out the burette using the solution that's going into the burette. So we take that out and we just rotate and tip into the sink. Just open the tap to let that little bit out. It's done. So we're back in the clamp. Tops closed, comfortable level, and we'll use the funnel to add some acid. We're going to fill it up now, and we're going to run it. The zero line's there. We're going to run it past the zero. You'll see why in a second. So we'll slow down when you get near the top, otherwise you'll end up with the acid coming out the top there. about an inch above the zero line. Take the funnel out. So you must never have the funnel in when you're doing the titration, otherwise the drips can go in and, and alter your results. Got this back over the desk now. And I'll just explain why we need to run it past the zero. So this part of the burette here is known as the jet. And obviously there's nothing in there at the moment because the tap's closed. The readings on the burette take this space into account, so it needs to be full. So I've run past, above the zero, so that into my waste beaker, I can fill the jet up. As you can see, it's full now. Very slowly, I'm gonna run that meniscus down to the zero. Now this is a good point to present the results table to you, what, what the results table is going to look like. So you can see we've got final, so that's the final burette reading in centimetres cubed. Initial burette reading, titra, so that's the amount that's being used in the burette, and the mean titra, so we'll be calculating that as well. Now obviously the first titration that you do is a rough one. So it's the, tr the trial titration. And then once we get a rough idea of where we need to, um, how much uh, solution we need to add from the burette, we go on to an accurate titration. And ideally, you carry out two of those and they're in agreement with each other. And then you can stop. You shouldn't really use your trial results uh, in your, your calculation of your mean. So you can see there, the initial burette reading for the trial titration is 0, 0.00. So I'll just show you this board here. So you can see the meniscus, this red line here, this is the liquid level. Remember the surface tension in the in the water in the liquid's gripping to the glass and it creates this meniscus. So the ba the base of the meniscus sits on that zero line. I've drawn it so that it's exactly on, and we write that as 0, 0.00 cubic centimetres. And you can see on this board here, I've deliberately drawn the meniscus that little bit too high. So obviously you would run the acid down, or the alkali, whatever's in the burette, until the base of that meniscus sits on the line. So you couldn't, obviously you couldn't use that as your starting value. If you slightly overrun, don't, you don't have to panic and think, oh, I better put some more and get it exactly on zero. Basically, as long as you know where the burette starts, then that's fine, as you'll see. So I've drawn this meniscus slightly below the zero line, but it's not quite on the 0 0.1 line. So these are going up in 0 0.1 centimetres cubed. That's 0 0.5 centimetres cubed. So if the meniscus was there, it could be anywhere between here and here, you would write that as 0 0.05 centimetres cubed. You, what you can't do, you can't say, right, that's roughly halfway between 0 0.1, so 0 0.05, and then your partners go, no, no, it's not that far, it's no, that's 0 0.04. Burettes can't measure that accurately. If it's not on the line like that, it's not quite on the next one, it's always 0 0.5 something. Okay, so that second decimal place can only be a 0 or a 5. And you can see on this one, 
I've drawn the meniscus, it's exactly on this first purple line after the zero, so you would record that as 0 0.10, okay? And again, if that meniscus dropped and it was somewhere like that, that would be 0 0.15 centimeters cubed. Remember that second decimal place only a zero or a five, that's it.